we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassman, come right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there that lists all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review wherever you get your podcast. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, where we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture each and every week. And we just dropped a new episode this morning, so check that out as soon as you can. Plus, also as well, Game Source, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, the great folks at LakersBall.com, the also great folks at Lakerholics.com, and also our good friends at the Hoopheads Podcast Network, which support our show by helping us out there on social media, tweeting it out there as far as highlights from our latest and greatest shows. And if you can do anything at all to support any of these great causes, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, I was trying to think before the game ended tonight, I, I usually come up with a theme for the show or some kind of you know snazzy intro or something that would go ahead and just really grab the attention of the viewers and listeners out there so that we can get into what happened in the course of the game. But there were many themes running along today as the Lakers entered their road trip in Cleveland. You could say LeBron comes back home to Cleveland, but we've been there. We've done that. And my gosh, he came home and really did a great job today, but we'll hold on to that in just a sec. We could also talk about DJ Augustine, who a month and a half ago was probably sitting on his couch at home watching the NBA because he had been let go by the Houston Rockets and he was waiting his next job in the NBA or unsure if he was going to get another job in the NBA until the Lakers called. And look at him. He had an outstanding game. But we could also talk about the Lakers offense, which is not only produced today, it's produced for the most part in Washington for three quarters anyways, and of course the great game in Toronto as well. I will go ahead and say this right now. The Lakers, if they can shoot like this, if they can be on the offensive end continuously like this, then the Lakers can put some hope. Can. Didn't say would. Said they can put some hope in the spirit, in the eyes of Laker fans everywhere. As today, the Lakers took a team in Cleveland which has exceeded by far, any expectations in the NBA. In fact, here in Vegas, they were predicted to win only 29 games. They've exceeded their record and played well above their heads, but with Jared Allen being out of the lineup, their all-star center, unfortunately, that has left them a little bit behind in the defense, and today was just an offensive show, and they couldn't keep up with the Lakers as LeBron James coming back home to Cleveland, 38 points, 11 rebounds, 12 assists, only three turnovers. Amazing game from DJ Augustine, 7 of 7, 6 of 6 from three-point area, and 20 points to chip in. Malik Monk had 12, Stanley Johnson had 12, and some good timely steals as well, three steals, played excellent defense. Austin Reeves did a solid job as well, 11 points, 6 assists. Russell Westbrook still out there trying to do what he can to try and, I guess, you know, bring back his positive image in front of the fans, doing a little bit better. Again, plus 23, led the team in that, 20 points, 11 assists, and the Lakers. I'll tell you what, they closed out the game strong, something we've been hoping now for a while, and they win, 120 to, uh, 131 to 120. And here today to talk about today's game, are some great guests indeed. In fact, one just left his room right now. He just was so happy, but hopefully he'll come back. First up, first man in is a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and check out what he does each and every game when he's on his game time chat as Ox1947. It is Joe Sorrow. And Joe, before we go on the air with you, my friend, I want to go ahead and give a big thank you again to our YouTube viewers. We have just broken another record for us here at the Lakers Fast Break on view counts at YouTube. And I can tell you what, the Lakers Fast Break channel on YouTube is blowing up. 
They loved what we're doing the past week. And I cannot thank everyone enough who's watching on YouTube, Facebook, and also checking us out on podcasts for doing so. It's the, the last three minutes were a sequence of basketball that I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. It was, I know, right? Yeah. It, it was, it was a, it was a staple in the Laker lore, Laker DNA, yeah. where because we've had such great players, guys like Kobe, guys like AD, guys like LeBron, that's that's the separator. Yeah. That last three minutes of every game, you're you're naturally going to feel that if it's a close game or you're up by a couple points, those great players are going to seal the game. Yeah. I hadn't seen that in so long and I really missed it. And all the Laker fans really missed it. It was just it, it was it was like breaking a fever watching that the last three minutes. And the game was a extremely entertaining game. It's yes. been it's been very, very entertaining the last three games i just wish we could have closed out you know the washington game the last four minutes we'd be sitting on a three-game winning streak however the offense is is starting to click in the way that i've been begging them to click which is try to be more fundamental which means if lebron is going to be covered by two or three guys as he's going to the basket can you can you dive into the to, to the to the basket too so he can give it to you? I mean, this is the one guy that, that wants to do that. He doesn't yeah. want to jump over everybody, right? And dunk on them, which of course he did do that too. And if you watch that facial, he touched Kevin just enough where he went up another three not three inches, and his eyebrows were in line with the basket can you explain something to me Absolutely. how and what supplement training is this guy doing to still continue that vertical it's well, not you gotta remember he spends a lot more than you and i can i i i do understand that uh i think early numbers were a million dollars a year i think that's just a nice round number that yes. most of these athletes just say it might be more. I, I don't know. We 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 joke that he he might be taking some stuff that no one knows about. Well, we've but called him the cyborg here for quite some time. I, we've seen it before, right? We've seen Carl Malone. We've seen John Stockton. To some degree, we've seen it with Michael Jordan, and to some degree, Derek Fisher and, and Kobe Bryant. What's amazing about LeBron James is, I just. He's doing it. He's doing it in his nineteenth season, with all that's gone on. I mean, he's not. I mean, he's getting help now. The role players are doing their thing. But what is if LeBron is going to play like this for the remaining three months, three four months? Let's just say if we get to that, of course, just hypothetically. AD comes back, he's going to solve a lot of the defensive issues because that's the part that I haven't gotten used to yet. I can't, like, I can't get into this back and forth. Even though it's exciting, it really makes me hurt. It, it physically hurts when it's, they can't get a stop for four or five straight series. It just drives me nuts. I'm not used to that. But that's what the NBA is looking like right now. It's just something where you got to, it's 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 it, you're playing ping pong and the other guys playing well, again, back like forth. I mentioned though with Jared Allen out of the lineup in the middle for them even though Mobley is a good defensive player developing and possibly the rookie of the year it's very hard for them to go ahead and be able to maintain that kind of defense they had earlier this season when you have your big man out of the lineup like that so we both had our big man out of the lineup and we got a chance to see you know horses running right Yes, horses absolutely. running with back and forth. Love uh, it! I absolutely yeah. love it. I'm it's, sorry, Joe. I love that. It's fine. Look, I don't mind it if 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 we weren't in the position we were in, it might not hurt as much because I'm worried that we're an old team. They're a young team. Are we going to run out of gas? And it just looked like 
the Lakers were, were were doing the fundamentals at the end of the game. They were they were running hard to the basket. They were allowing LeBron to to draw everyone in, and he'd give them the ball. And they just made really, really, really good decisions individually. Russell Westbrook, I'd say this might have been probably my favorite game he's played this year. It was almost like he he was a plus 23. Every, yes. every moment he was on the court, it seemed like things were going well, and he wasn't doing much you know, relative to what, what he's used to doing. He wasn't which, doing much as far as detracting. Right, right. And again, it's, 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 we're trying to, we're trying to get to a point here where there's finally some form of chemistry. We still need to wait for AD to get back. And if some miracle, this bone bruise from hell uh, <laughs> can heal, we, we, we might be able to get another perimeter player that can not only, shoot from the perimeter but also break a you know break someone down one on one to get to the hole we are i'm i'm i have to be i want to be optimistic and i want to i want to ride this as, as long as we can go especially with the fact that the hornets lost today we gained another game there it's looking the like oh jeez i met the pelicans i still remember as the Orleans and the whole hornets i know I the hornets know. beat the pelicans <laughs> there you go. Pelicans lost. The Hornets beat the Pelicans. And LeBron is a I don't even know if freak is the right word. He cyborg is a great word. Um I'll think of another word and, and let you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna rack my brain on that one. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend, though, he is a cyborg, the way he played today, but also DJ Augustine, he gets a lot of credit. He started off the game hot. He's the guy who kept the Lakers in the game when Cleveland took a, a early lead, actually led throughout most of the first half, in you know, a small, like four to six points, pretty much all the way. But the Lakers stayed in it due, like I said, first to the hot shooting of DJ Augustine, and then... LeBron James started to take over in the second quarter. And here today to talk about the Lakers win, which is also good now that we're starting to talk about a couple Lakers wins here out of three games and also a pretty good Lakers performance in Washington. Good man indeed. You got to check out his latest article today at Lakerholics.com. Please be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. You'll check out not only Jamie Sweet's Five Things articles, which will be a good one this time for a lot of people out there because it'll be a, on a win, but also you get to talk about the latest article from Laker Tom, and that is Lakers need a modern center who can protect the rim and stretch the floor. It is Laker Tom, and Laker Tom, you got to be pleased. You've been saying at nauseum, it's not the Lakers defense, which I will disagree with you on, but it's been the offense that's been substandard over the course of time. That had to all change today because today the offense was clicking through all four quarters and not just one half, three quarters, part of the game. It was the whole entire game, especially at the very end. Everything started to come in place and it was a delight to see. Well, you know, it's – you really cannot <laughs> – underestimate the value of a player like LeBron James because at that one period in the fourth quarter where you normally see a tough Lakers team that's you know that's been within six points plus or minus all the way through the game you normally see them struggle they we we don't execute well at the end of games um, and part of it is that we don't have a Kobe Bryant we don't have a go-to scorer who's prefers to score LeBron really is not that player you know he can be at times and has been at times, um, and he scores his share of points, as we all know. But he's not, you know, but in that third, in that fourth quarter, when we were having that stretch from, let's say, eight minutes down to four minutes, um, boy, LeBron, just those fadeaway shots, I couldn't believe them. Three of them in a row there. Um, really just a special, special game. And you can see the team trying to get him that, sh that two more shots, one yes. more shot for two more points. They hit 40. Um, and it was, it was just great to see. But the thing that the Lakers are doing right now, and you have to discount what happened in, in the game against the Wizards because it has been three real good games in a row. 
Only one, one quarter. One of those three games. Well, first off, you got to give credit to Russell Westbrook. His best three games of the year, without a doubt. His best three games as a Laker. Um, um I, look, I would add in the Charlotte game where he scored thirty in the second half. But yes, I but get no. It's, but here's here's the reason why it isn't the points that he scored. It's the way he played, Gerald. Because this, I understand that, but I'm just telling you that there was also posting one him up, game. posting him up in the middle, yes. forcing teams to double him to open up shooters on the outside, has been the way that we have been able to avoid the death knell of having three shooters and no not being able to surround them with three point shooters to give them spacing, and and I give Bogle credit for this. He's he's hung with this and said all along that there are ways to make up for the loss of three-point gravity that we have. And we're finding one of the ways, and Russell Westbrook is at the heart of it. Um, and then it's LeBron James, man. He's playing. He, he wants the champion. He wants to be the scoring champion this year. You can see that he really is. He would like to add that to his resume, and, and he's going to do it. Um, and then the other guy that Augustine, Augustine really has come in and played really well. Um, and the team – we're starting to see not as much on defense, but a little bit on defense, but we're really starting to see on offense that this team is starting now with the limited rotation that they've got and Frank not playing some of the players who have been problematic in the past. We're starting to see chemistry, exactly what Joe was talking about, that this team is starting to develop that chemistry and that ability to take those quick little jerky drives that they're taking and the passing that was interior passing we're seeing. We won the we won the rebound battle tonight. We and, and it wasn't due to Dwight. We won the points in the paint battle, and that wasn't due to Dwight either. We really played well. The team fought for rebounds. Austin Reeves must have made at least four plays that I thought were like, you know, Medal of Honor plays where he grabbed another the big thing, only eight turnovers. Yep. Well, that's always a key for this team, and that if we take care of the ball and 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 don't make silly, stupid plays. Stanley Johnson, I thought, was really terrific too. He was in the middle of so many excellent, quick plays where a ball was passed to somebody, and it was just a quick tip pass to somebody else. So, you know, the question that everybody is asking is, can the Lakers really string together something? And I keep pointing out to the simple fact that we're going to take the worst two guys in the rotation, which to me are Avery Bradley and THT, and we're going to replace them with Anthony Davis and Kendrick Nunn. And we're going to go into the playoffs with that improvement in the lineup. And the way the team is playing at both ends, the way that everybody seems to be contributing, um, you got to win the play in tournament and we're going to have to win two games there because we're not going to be able to overtake, you know, we're not going to be able to get up to the seventh or eighth spot. So we're going to have to win two games there, but then we get, we get the Suns in the first round and maybe, maybe Chris Paul's not coming back in time, or maybe it's going to take him some time to get going. Um, and we'll have AD and none instead of THT and, and, Bradley, depending on what Frank does with his rotations, but you got to narrow the rotations going into the playoffs. And that's the key because we're starting now to see that these young guys are getting more time. They're starting to gel with LeBron. They're starting to gel. They, they're making the right plays. They're making the right passes. They're hustling on defense. Um, it's, it's, it's really an exceptional string of three games. Um, I'm sure it looks so much more enjoyable to us because of the way the season has gone up until now. But I had the same feeling that Joe did during the game. I turned to my wife and I said, you know, hey, win or lose, this is a great game, man. We're playing a great game. The other team's playing a great game. Everybody's playing great. There's just It's just going to be who's going to make the big plays down the stretch. And tonight, or this afternoon, it was the Lakers. So great game. And uh, let's go for four in a row against, is it the 76ers next? That's correct. They would go home to play the 76ers at the crypto.com arena. That'll be a Wednesday, 730 mm -hmm. tilt, 730 Pacific, of course. So we will go ahead and be on after the game for that. But before that's we gonna head be a, that's going to be a tough boy. Dwight better play a lot better than he did tonight. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Cause there's, he's got to use his five oh. fouls wisely there. But once again, the Lakers do pull away from the Cavs in the fourth quarter with a tremendous offensive performance, 131 to 120. 
I know Laker Tom, like I said, has a great article that you need to catch on how the modern center is what the Lakers need and who can protect the rim and stretch the floor at the same time. I know his fascination is on Miles Turner, but you also see he has also fascination on Kristen Wood. So they're front and center in his latest article at Lakerholics.com. What, did, but, what about the news of the coaching news that hit the uh, air? Gerald, we should talk about that. Well, let's go ahead. Please go ahead and mention that as far as the, the coaching stuff that went on the air. So uh, there's a lot to talk about on that. So go ahead. Elaborate. Um, well, I, I find it interesting because it, it, it skews perfectly with the point of my article, which is that I think the Lakers need more size. And the question is, do you want that size to be in the form of a, of a small forward who can chase the, the scores around the wing defender that we always needed? Or do you want it to be a stretch center? Somebody who can do what JaVale and, and Dwight used to do, but could also stretch the floor and, and be a three-point threat. Um, and, and the news came out that there, even though he's under contract, Quinn Snyder um, may be available. And uh, obviously the Lakers would be a logical choice. He's also been talked about as the. He's been an assistant for, for the team. Yeah, he's also he's he has a he has that credential, which is that he was a Laker, you know, and you know how Jeannie likes that. Um, he's also been talked about as the replacement for uh, for Pops, you know, in San Antonio. So um, I'm not sure how that would go. Would we have to give him a draft pick or something to? Uh, well, if he's still under contract, yeah. you have to give them a draft pick as we probably have to give him something. But here, but here's the interesting part and about you know, it. You know, Danny Ainge. Well, hold on, Danny Ainge is as the guy who's yeah. running the strings there now. Yeah. Is going to make sure that he would bleed the Lakers dry as best he can. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. And uh, Minnesota, that, that's a strange ownership Danny transition Ainge. in Minnesota. You know that that whole situation. He's overrated, running the team. Most overrated GM in the history of GMs. Right. Just telling you, he's running the team, and he, you know, he was a yeah, one trade. Himself. One, I'm sorry, two, two trades. He made two trades, and he lived off those for freaking 15 right. years. One was his buddy given the big ticket to him. And the other was Jeff green for Ray Allen who wanted to get out of Milwaukee yeah. or Seattle. Sorry. So what? Well, That's the only what, thing they've done since the dark ages. All too. he did was, all he did was hoard his draft picks to the point where he alienated his current roster. He alienated would be free agents because of how they treated uh, players. You know, it's, this isn't, you know, he was trying to be Bill Belichick. It doesn't work like that in the NBA. Bill Belichick can do what he does because you have 22 players on a team. This is the NBA. You have five players that got to play both sides of the, the the court. You, 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 one guy, you can screw everything up. So I, Quinn Snyder is going to have to get fired. And I think he might get fired if he bows out in the first round, which. Well, they, they may go into a rebuild and there may be a mutual they need to trade agreement there. That- they need to if we're going to rebuild, there. you know, we're, we're going to move later. Here's the point, though. He's a, he's a guy that likes big defensive centers to anchor our defense, and we don't have that right now, and it's really what we're missing. You know, everybody everybody thinks that I'm just a, a, fall, a small ball fanatic, but that's really not the truth. I hate small ball when the players are smaller than other teams. What I loved about the Lakers small ball was it was on steroids because – you got Anthony Davis at the center, and you got LeBron James at power forward. Um, I like to play five out on offense. I like we to neutralize. One of the things I said, but man. I like to have I like to have shot blocker on the floor all forty eight minutes because that's how you anchor a defense. Then your perimeter players can play tougher. That that, that that's why we were successful in twenty twenty. We had right. Javel McGee. So we could had- still do that while modernizing it by having a guy who's not going to clog the paint. I mean, did you watch tonight when Dwight was in the game? Man, there was no space when Dwight well, was in the game. Well, that's why I, I, this, is the, this is the only part where I, I, I kind of feel bad for Frank. That People are like, put put Dwight in, put Dwight in. I'm like, yeah. if they put Dwight in, he's going to clog the lane, it's, yeah. and he can't shoot. And a lot of times he, he, he's – But you hope I, he'd do better than he did on defense. You know, you hope that he'd be at least – he, yeah. Honestly, I think he should retire after this year. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's got he, a lot He's left. done. He's kind of done. And Maybe he's not one as out done of three as, game. He's a one out of three game guy now. You know, absolutely. He, he's not as done as DJ. Uh, no, DJ was a one out of uh, ten. Yeah, it's DJ. But geez, I mean, guys, it's it's it, sometimes the body just won't. won't I'd move. like to ask Rob Palenka. You know, why doesn't anybody ask Rob Palenka? Rob, 
how come we don't have more size? But, you know, tonight, what was the size really wasn't Dwight in the game. It was Wenyon and Stanley, who both came in. They had the second and third best plus minuses last tonight. They played excellent games. They played great defense. Um, Wenyon missed his three threes. That was disappointing. But they were there every time LeBron went to the basket. It was usually one of those two guys who got a pass or made a pass that was part of the sequence that ended up getting all of those points in the paint that led us to dominate this game. Um, so it's it's really not Frank. The problem is Frank is he hates to play rookie or untested players. And he just, it, it's why we went through Ariza all of those games. It's why we went through DJ all of those games before he'd finally bench him and you know, they'd never see a, you know, a D, permanent DMP right next to their name. Um, so maybe now through all of this horror that we've gone through in this first 70 games or whatever it is, Frank's finally come to the point where he's starting the two guys he should have started. Now, if you put Monk back in there instead of Dwight, um, I think between, I think Wenyon basically his size is necessary in that starting lineup. He really makes a big difference in it. We didn't see it at the start of the game, and that's often the case with young players. But when we got on further in the game, he was a real vital part of that fourth quarter run by LeBron uh, in, in cut, making cuts at the right time, getting into positions at the right time, um, and really punishing them all the time. His rebounding was excellent. He played good defense. So getting getting Johnson and and – you know, and we're going to have to waive somebody because this guy's a two-way contract. He can't go into the playoffs. He's got to be. We're going to have to waive. Uh, we're probably going to waive Bazemore, you know, in order to get get him onto the roster. But he's definitely going to be part of the postseason. Well, we'll see what happens again. That's uh, the Lakers. They go ahead and they close out the game strong. Had an excellent offensive show in beating the Cleveland Cavaliers, one thirty-one to one twenty. Again, the next game that we're going to cover is going to be on Wednesday, and that's going to be at 7.30 Pacific. But before we head on out, guys, it is winning time, episode three. I know this brings a smile to Joe's face. See that big old smile right there for you? <laughs> I will tell you what, episode three of winning time brought a couple different things around as far as the show is concerned. It talked about, oh, actually it dealt with, Magic coming to L.A., his first few weeks in L.A., trying to get adjust to life in L.A., not being the big fish anymore like he was in Michigan. Pat Riley, who is being played by Academy Award winner Adrian Brody. You can see he's smiling already. He is I also, love Adrian Brody. <laughs> he is also like Jerry West, trying to cope with life after the NBA trying to latch on with the Lakers in a color analyst role, which you know, actually in real life he did, but he's still trying to showcase that he is worthy of that position. Although Chick Hearn in a very interesting turn for Chick Hearn, because <laughs> it presents Chick Hearn in a completely different light these past couple of episodes. And I'll just leave it at that. You have to check it out. And people have been saying a lot about if this is the real Chick Hearn that they're seeing, and behind the scenes and whatnot. But I'll just say that Chick Hearn is very dubious on whether or not Pat Riley is going to become a color analyst. So he said, make dubious. Is that, is that the PC word? <laughs> yes. Dubious to say the least, but he's, he's very unsure about it. Let's yeah. that way. <laughs> so he tells Pat uh, Riley to go make a demo tape. And in the, process, yeah, that's what he told them. <laughs> So in the process of making a demo tape, Pat Riley destroys his backyard garage. Oh, it was so, so Pat Riley, man. It's so yeah. Pat Riley. <laughs> so he's uh, like Jerry West in this in this in the series. He's really having a hard time trying to cope with life after the NBA. Plus, also as well, you have Jerry Buss again, John C. Riley doing a tremendous job. Oh. I also want to give uh, props to Norm Nixon's son, who again is. Uh, he's it's a competition between him and magic for the point guard spot, obviously, but he's also doing a kind of like mentorship in a way with him and, and magic gets to see all of his side business and whatnot. But I will tell you what uh, Norm Nixon's son who is playing Norm Nixon in the series 
to me, he and John C. Riley are the killer guys in this this series because they are doing a tremendous job, both of them. But Jerry Buss, I will say, John C. Riley gets upset that Jerry Tarkanian doesn't take their initial offer, so he goes to Las Vegas to try and lure Jerry Tarkanian into becoming the head coach, offering him money, cars, things of that nature. But the associate of Jerry Tarkanian comes into question at the very end because there's the inference that the wise guys or the mafia in Las Vegas are not very happy with Jerry Tarkanian contemplating an offer like this. And they're ultimately, they show their displeasure by taking out the longtime associate of Jerry Tarkanian uh, and just really just uh, it was kind of uh, Vic Weiss, which is actually, it was actually close to what re happened in real life. It wasn't verbatim, but it was very close to what happened in real life because Vic Weiss, he had, some, you know, if you read the articles on the actual fact check, Vic Weiss, who's an associate of Jerry Tarkanian, had a huge gambling debt. And unfortunately, his debt was paid off in the manner of him being stuffed in the back of his Rolls Royce and was at the hotel where they were going to discuss negotiations on Jerry Tarkanian finally becoming the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. We all know that from real life, Jer Jerry Tarkanian was so shaken up by this and he was only contemplating it. He had actually been offered by Jack Ken Cook, Jack Ken Cook a couple of years prior with that $700,000 offer and was actually at that original conversation between him, Jerry Buss, and also as well, Jerry Tarkanian, which Jack Ken Cook was not shown on the television. So they kind of like retconned it a little bit, but ultimately the associate of Jerry Tarkanian, Vic Weiss, who again was uh, a little bit involved in this, is trying to arrange the hopefully at that point in time hiring of Jerry Tarkanian unfortunately didn't come to pass and again Vic Weiss meets an untimely death due to the hands of some mysterious means in the back of again his stuff his body is stuffed in the back of the Rolls Royce I will finish it by saying we get also the arrival of the eventual coach Jack McKinney who Jerry West initially scoffs at as he's leaving as he's the outbound coach but then he really discovers the offense that Jack McKinney helped create and really liked what he saw. So some interesting things going around. Again, Norm Nixon's son is doing an outstanding job. John C. Riley talking to you at length for about five minutes, talking about a comb over. It was really hilarious as well. But Joe, you actually watched it. You tell me your thoughts. Laker Tom, did you get a chance to see it as well? I, I haven't even had a chance to see it. Okay. Well, Joe, tell us what your thoughts are before we head on out. I'll, 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 uh, get back to the, the beginning of your, ex, you know, well, I wanted to catch everybody up. So yeah. uh, the beginning, when we're talking about chick uh, again, guys, uh, for those of you who are millennials and beyond, this is and, not a very PC look at chick right. Person. Right. And again, this, it, 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 there's a reason why I'm ecstatic about it. And most of the people around me are whining about it. Number one, people whine, non-stop anyway so this is just giving them another reason to whine there chick hearn this is this is me coming to southern california in 1996 i discover for the first time again direct tv was around but it wasn't like it is today there's a lot of things that just weren't like they are today right 1996 things weren't readily available the only time i'd seen the lakers before i arrived to southern california was through tnt uh a, uh, NBC, uh, nationally televised type games, right? Never local because I wasn't local. So I get to San Diego, and at that time, they showed all the home games of the Lakers. And I remember I was at my cousin's house, and Chick Hearn comes on the TV. And when I was switching the channels, I'm like, what is this? Chick Hearn. Chick Hearn's talking about the Lakers. There's a game? I looked at my cousin. I go, wait a minute. They they show the game all at like games on on TV here. They're like, yeah, every home game is on TV, and then you got to go to KCAL to watch the road games. And sometimes they're they show them, sometimes they don't. I thought it was, and I had just discovered a Steeler bar a half a mile from campus. I went to San Diego State, and I'm going. Wait a minute. So now I can watch all the Steeler games and watch 
the Laker games at home, all of them, total like I, I, I thought San Diego at that point was it was I was in heaven. God put me in heaven. Like I died and I'm in heaven now, right? One thing I noticed, I've always seen Chick. I saw Chick Hearn on Fletch. I've heard him on the radio. I've I've heard nothing but the good stuff, right? So I'm watching him do Lakers live on the radio. I believe it was Extra Sports 690, I think it was. Or, no, I'm sorry, 570. And I know that callers can be kind of, you know, not too br- bright. But that guy was brutal to them. Like, to the point where I'm, like, listening. I'm like, geez, I am never calling Chick <laughs> ever. This guy is lambasting these people. And then there's a clip. The most famous clip that I can remember with him and Stu is Michael Thompson runs right in front of him during a shoot around. And Chick has this look like, like he wanted to grab Michael and throw him out the arena. So you've seen, I've heard and seen that Chick. And I've always wondered, like, what was it? And I, I've also heard he was hard on Stu. Like, he would get on Stu pretty bad. So I think, I think, <laughs> I can't say it because, you know, I know we, we want to keep this 2022, yes. but I was cracking up at what he was saying to Pat. Pat Riley, out of all people, okay, even with that handlebar mustache and that hair, I mean, I, I always looked at Pat Riley as a man's man, and, and I didn't – I don't know if that's true. Was he really that insecure? Was he really that, you know, kind of down on himself? And, and then, again, of course, they might be taking creative liberties on this. So, uh, I mean, they've, which already, is, they've already admitted – the producers yeah. have already admitted that they are taking creative liberties with the series. But, 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 yeah, very true. But at the same time, Pat has had some – like, I've seen him in interviews, and there is – there's a humbleness about him, and I think that's kind of something people don't really, really give him enough credit for. He's He had just enough humbleness to never be what he, he was, which was this – he was just as – he was the perfect pilot for Showtime. He, he had the Hollywood man look. The suits were immaculate. He spoke in, in, a, in the most articulate way. He was always a good winner, a good loser. Like, Pat Riley is the man. And it, it makes sense that he would cut himself and then burn the house and then chainsaw the house down. That I believe that. I, I think that's a good representation. Um, but then chicken on him was the part that I was just cracking up. I'm like, wow, this guy's already depressed and you're just yeah. – <laughs> by the chest and you're dirty you're, you're taking his heart out even more but it's extremely entertaining i i am really really enjoying the show i know a lot of it is embellished i don't think any different of jerry west pat riley chick hearn again you got to understand one thing that about these guys i mean you're talking about ego and machismo and just i mean alpha we, have males. To, we have to preface it as saying it is a different time no, I'm not seven, doing that. No, I'm not saying that. No, that's 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 I Triple am, G saying it. I am. I I'm am. saying that's how men are. Alpha males. You had alpha males from every end. Think about it. Bill Sharman. You have Jerry West. You have Chick Hearn. You have Pat Riley. And then you got freaking Doctor Bus. And then you got Magic. And then you got Kareem. You got Norm Nixon. Think about that for a second, guys. Just think about that. That amount of alpha. In one spot, the fact that they won a title two out of three years, they probably would have won one in 81 if Magic didn't get hurt, just goes to show you how amazing this story is going to be in the end. I'm just, I, I'm a Laker fan. It's about the Lakers. I think the casting has been amazing. I mean, I'm looking at that guy that's playing Magic. I, I can't, I, I don't know where the hell they found that guy. That's it's just ridiculous how they found a guy that looked just like him when he was young. And, John C. Riley, the fact that he he wasn't doing much, and I know COVID was a big issue, but the fact that that guy wasn't doing something the last two years is a travesty because that guy is one of the most talented people I've ever watched on TV. So I am hurting that I have to wait 
five weeks until this is done, and then we're going to be getting. I think they're going to they got to do something, man. They got to continue this. Well, let me, give you an update. let me give you an update on what they're doing as far as numbers wise. No, it's not. I want to be like Liquor Tom, by the way. Oh, hold on. I got to go. You both. Yeah. I got to yeah, yeah, cover that. Yeah. Sorry. No, not Liquor until, Tom, not until Coke pays us. Yeah. Not until Coke <laughs> pays us, but it's not oh. doing euphoria numbers, but the numbers are rising. Episode two, the numbers did rise to just over a million viewers, 1.2 million viewers, I think, as far as it's concerned. So, that's a positive sign for both HBO and HBO Max, and it's a positive sign that you can see a season two. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to this series continuing. Yes, a lot of it is enhanced, maybe a little bit embellished. Again, a little bit changed, but I try to put up, it when I can find it, right after the episode hits, the fact checks to show, show exactly in each episode what was truth, what was not. So if you have any questions or if you have any comments, about winning time episode three or the series as a whole please let us know in the comments on facebook youtube or you can go ahead and hit me up on twitter at lakers fast break at laker tom because laker tom will catch up on episode three i know in the not too distant future at joe sorrow five on twitter or lakers fast break at yahoo.com you can always email us with your questions comments things about the lakers we'll read on the air but once again i do want to go before we go I want to go ahead and thank the YouTube viewers. We hit another all-time high on our Washington Wizards game, and I am so immensely grateful to everyone out there watching on YouTube. Joe and I have been trying to go ahead and answer your comments on YouTube, and we truly appreciate it. Thank you for the thumbs up to Ronald, who gave us the thumbs up tonight. But the Lakers, once again, with a nice, strong victory they played well, especially on the offensive end for all four quarters, and they beat the Cavs 131 to 120. We will definitely be back on Wednesday night after the game against Philadelphia, hoping to see if I can get something arranged with Jamie and Sean covering the Western and Eastern Conference heading into the playoffs very soon. So looking forward to that. But we will definitely be back on Wednesday after the Philadelphia game. And if you have any questions for us, please let us know. Right here at Lakers Fast Break. Also, as well, Lakerholics.com. Be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. Be part of the game time chat at Lakersball.com. Ox 1947, aka Joe Soros, always there during game time. So go ahead and check him out there. But once again, we'll be back after the game right here on Wednesday against Philadelphia at the Lakers Fast Break podcast. <laughs>